Hello book friends, long time, no talk. I had taken a little bit of a hiatus through the month of January because I had to do a little uh, self reevaluation and I had some stuff going on in my life that I had to take care of. But I am back and I hope that I am back now for the foreseeable future. I have no intentions of taking any more breaks. I have no intentions of not posting. So hopefully from here on out, I will be posting vlogs weekly and I will have other content out either on Wednesdays or Fridays. This coming week, the first week of February, I am planning to have two videos, both Wednesday and Friday, to try to kind of play some catch up on some videos that I've already pre-recorded and wanted to get out for you guys because I hate to have any wasted content and also some stuff that I talked about. Um, I talked, I wrapped up some books that I had read and everything like that and I wanted to make sure that I got that information out to you guys uh, for those of you who are interested. So I decided to get back into the swing of things. Today is Sunday, January 31st. I am attempting to get seven books read for January. I have five books currently and I am in the middle of reading Bunny by Mona Awad. I am on page 32, possibly a little bit further. I was listening to the audio also. I'm also reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which I am definitely further than this. I was also listening to the audio for this one. I think I'm around page 50 on this one. And so these are the two physical books that I'm attempting to read, and I wanted to finish them before the end of January, but I know I'm not going to be able to finish Addy for sure because I just there's too many pages and not enough time and I also have distractions. Um, as far as Bunny goes, I'm gonna try to finish this tonight. I was going to do a 24-hour reading vlog for you guys and post this up tomorrow since this is Sunday. This is the 31st, last day of January, and then I'm gonna get a fresh start tomorrow for a full weekly reading vlog. I'm also listening to an audiobook. Um, it is Zen in the Art of Writing Essays on Creativity by Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury is one of my favorite authors of all time. I think that he is masterful. I love his use of the English language. I love his use of literary devices in his writing. I think that his imagery is just on another level. I absolutely love his work. And I am super enjoying this. It's only three hours long, and I'm already a good bit into it. I am planning on knocking this out tonight because I am listening to the audiobook. I did order a physical copy of this book because I'm loving it so much. I want to get a copy and actually annotate it because there's just so much here. There's just so much good advice for writers and creators and people who are putting themselves out there artistically. I feel like if you are a creator, if you are somebody who is artistic, you should listen to this because it does not just talk to writers and people and people in that profession. It really speaks to anybody who is has a cre who has a creative mind. So, I will talk to you more about it as I finish it. Right now, I'm about uh, it says it's 13 chapters, and I'm on chapter 4, almost on chapter 5, and it's really short. So I'm going to try to knock that out while I'm doing some house cleaning stuff, and then I'm going to sit down and get as much red on Bunny as I can. I am loving Bunny. I'll go ahead and tell you guys right now. Bunny is written in a weird way. It's written in... It's, a, it's very difficult because it's not a way that you normally see books written where it's just straightforward about like what's going on and and how people are doing things. It's written in a way that you're getting snippets of somebody who might not be mentally stable and they are the person like that you're in the head of. So you're getting information in very jagged ways. It's not it's a very difficult book to describe because it's so out there. If you like writing that's kind of out there, that's not straightforward, then this might be a book that you would enjoy. I'm enjoying it so far because I'm intrigued to see, I have some ideas about where this might be going, and I'm intrigued to see what actually happens. Because 
I'm curious if some of the people are imaginary or if they're real or what might be going on behind the scenes in her head. Uh, I'm, I'm just intrigued to see where this book goes because I've heard it's a wild ride and I'm seeing that firsthand and I've heard that it just gets crazier as it goes. So I guess I'll find out and I will let you guys know as I get further into this. I'm excited. I haven't done a 24 hour reading vlog before. I'm going to stay up as late as I can tonight. I have coffee and my cup says it's 5 a.m. somewhere. This is a cup that's meant for having caffeine in it at all hours of the day. And that's what I'm planning on doing today so that I can get as much reading finished as possible. That being said, I'm going to stop talking to you guys now and get back to my reading. I'm also, before I go, playing a little bit of Animal Crossing because I've been, I started another island and I'm just having a really good time setting up a second island and maybe I will show you guys at some point what I've got going on. Right now there's not a whole lot to see because I just started it, but maybe later I will show you guys what's going on with that. So, I'll catch up with you guys in a little while. friends I'm wrapping up this 24-hour reading vlog I didn't have uh, a whole lot of time to do a lot of vlogging yesterday evening whenever I first started this because the children went to bed it was very dark in the house and just not good enough lighting to be talking to a camera so I finished the uh, Zen and the Art of Writing by Ray Bradbury that book is phenomenal if you're looking for inspiration for being a creator, for being a writer, for being an artist of any sort, I would definitely recommend his words. He and Neil Gaiman seem to have a lot of the same kind of thoughts when it comes to writing or just creating in general, and I really appreciate both of them for what they have to say on the topic of being creative. I think that they have very profound words in that topic, and I think that if you are looking for that, you should go to either one of them, specifically Zen and the Art of Writing by Ray Bradbury, but also if, you, if you're interested in this topic, you could also look to Neil Gaiman as well. But that being said, I absolutely loved his essays on the creative. His essays are so in-depth, I can't wait to really pick them apart whenever I have an actual physical copy of the book in front of me. 
um, I feel like I can really dig in deeper. The audiobook is wonderful, but sometimes with audiobooks, it's hard to really dig in because you don't have the words right in front of you. You just have the spoken words, and that's a different way of taking in information. And so for me, I like to actually see something in front of me and to be able to physically read it and to actually take in the concepts a bit more. Um, I just feel like there's so much there that you could get inspiration from. So anyway, I really loved it. That's definitely going to be five star for me. But it's also a really short audiobook if you're looking for something quick. It was like three hours and maybe 15 minutes or something like that. And so it was really good. Um, I am on page 100 in this now, and it it gets progressively more strange. And I don't know how to explain it because it's so strange that there's just not really a lot of description I could give you without like giving spoilers. So I have some ideas about the narrator being unreliable. It seems like she is dealing with some issues and that she may not be completely reliable, that what's actually going on may not really be what's going on, um, at least up to this point. And so I look forward to seeing what happens next because I have a feeling things are about to get weird. So, or weirder, because the book is weird altogether. But man, it is so good. It's one of those that when you start reading it, it's hard to put it down because it's so strange. And I may have already said this before, but it's just such an interesting story and the way that it's written the the surrealism of the story is just captivating because it's like it's different that's the biggest thing it's different so it's not straightforward which i know i said before it's not straightforward it's one of those that's going to take you on a journey through somebody's mind who sees the world in an interesting way and then also the characters that she's interacting with, you're not really sure honestly how reliable any of the characters are. So it just makes for a really crazy time. I hope to be finishing this tomorrow. Um, today is the first. I was wrapping this up today and I'm gonna post this in a little bit after I talk to you guys a little bit longer. And I also read and finished the original by Brandon Sanderson. I uh, started it yesterday and finished it this morning. Um, it's a novella and it is primarily an audiobook. I don't think that there's any um, physical book for it yet. Uh, it is different. It's very different. It's sci-fi and it was written uh, by Brandon Sanderson and someone else whose name escapes me but I'll put it up for you. It takes place in this world, but we have technologically advanced to the point that we are unable to die, basically. So there are nanites that can heal the body, and if you do die, then they can bring you back as like a clone, a replicated person with all of the same thoughts, and but yet like there's the possibility of them being able to manipulate anything about your personality that they want to manipulate. And it follows a girl named Holly as she she is a replica. She has been made to track down her original person that she was replicated from because the original supposedly did a heinous crime. So you're following the replica of a person looking for the original in order to kill her because she, she has done this heinous crime and she has escaped justice. And it is a really crazy interesting premise and the story is really good. The only complaint that I had was that the ending felt rushed. I wanted a little more because this, it's such an intriguing and interesting premise and then it just kind of fizzled out toward the end. And I understand that the replica can only live for four days to track down the original. If she is able to track down the original and to kill her, then she gets to continue after the four days. If not, then she dies after the four days. So 
you basically have like this four day span of her trying to track down the original and find out the truth about the heinous crime, what happened. And so like, I just felt like the ending could have been more. But anyway, if you like Brandon Sanderson and you enjoy his writing style, I recommend it. It's only three hours long. If you listen at a quicker speed, then you can finish it really quickly. I definitely think that it is worth checking out if you like sci-fi because it just sets up such an interesting world. I think that it's super neat. So anyway, over the past 24 hours, I have managed to finish Zen and the Art of Writing, the original by Brandon Sanderson, and I am 100 pages into Bunny, and I think that that was all that I really focused on in this 24 hours of reading. I added in some flashback uh, videos that I recorded during this month well, while I was not actually vlogging I did get a few interesting videos that I thought were cute and so I put those in here just for some filler it's good to be back in my vlogging and I am excited to talk to you guys about books more if you have read any of the books that I have read over this 24 hour reading vlog please let me know especially Bunny I would love to chat about this because it's so different so different. Until next time, guys. I'll see you later.